Hello YouTube, and I'm back once again with another video. Today we're going to go over the Beef Framework, which is an infamous tool for client-side exploitation. But before we get started, I'd like to say that many of you probably noticed that I've been putting out puzzles on Reddit lately that is in the style of Cicada 3301. And yes, this is true, and there are many more puzzles that are going to be coming. Be on alert for the puzzles because they are important. Anyway, the beef framework is for client-side exploitation, and if you're wondering what that is, it's basically a way to look for vulnerabilities on client computers and systems and exploit them remotely. Beef finds its vulnerabilities through browsers and lets you hook them and then exploit those browsers. What I mean by hooking is that when Beef hooks a website, it uses it as a beachhead for launching attack against a system within the browser. Hooking uses social engineering to get a user to click on a JavaScript file, and that file will be read back to the attacker's computer, letting them control it remotely. So anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Starting off, I have a Windows 7 virtual machine. I mainly chose Windows 7 because it's one of the most vulnerable operating systems today. I'm sure that this will work for most people using Windows 10 as well, as long as they visit the URL that we're going to make later in this video. And I'm sure as long as the browser understands JavaScript, this exploit will work for pretty much any operating system. I also have a Kali Linux virtual machine up as well for this demonstration. I could have chose Parrot OS, but I didn't have the ISO at the time. So the first thing you're going to want to do here is open up the Beef Toolkit by going to the Start menu and typing Beef. If you don't have Beef, you can install it by typing sudo apt-git install beef-xss. When it opens, you'll have an authentication panel wanting your username and password. We're going to need to change this later on so we can log in, so just be patient. What you're going to notice here when you open up Beef in the console is this JavaScript tag for HTML. This is the hook we are going to use for the attack. How this works is the attacker will make a simple HTML web page, embed this JavaScript file in that web page for the hook, letting the attacker have access to the computer's browser. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. The next thing we're going to do is start a web browser using Apache 2. This will enable our web page so we can make it go online for everyone to be able to access. Keep in mind that this attack we're doing only works for users within our network, and if you really wanted to attack someone like this outside the network, you would need to enable port forwarding. In order to make the HTML page we talked about earlier, we're going to need to navigate to the var slash www slash html directory and edit the index.html file using the nano text editor. If there's anything in this file, just delete it. We won't need it anymore. We will set the basic structure up for HTML by typing the doc type HTML uh, tag. This lets the text editor know that this is an HTML file. We need to set up the basic structure for it by typing in the head, title, and body tags. We're going to need to name this web page in the title per portion of our code hooked web page. I'm going to make a title to show on the web page using the h2 tag. Then we're going to put the p tag for paragraph to show text on the web page saying, this is a hooked web page and you've been hacked. The next part, and the most important part of all of this, is that we're going to need to copy the hook on the console for beef and paste it into our HTML file. We will then need to type ifconfig in the terminal to get our IP address and then put it in the file so the client computer redir redirects to us. Replace the IP part of the code with your actual IP address, and also keep in mind that I forgot to get rid of these brackets here and here. Remember to do that or else this won't work. Save the file as index.html and continue. Now we're going to try to log into Beef, but it didn't work. This is a problem. Because when you first open Beef for the first time, it should ask you to put in your custom password. However, in the case that this doesn't happen, you will need to edit the config.yaml file located in the slash user slash share slash beef dash xss to set the password manually. Once you actually have beef open and you're logged in, go back to the Windows 7 virtual machine. Let's pretend for a second here that we're an unsuspecting victim about to get hooked. 
So let's say that the victim opens up Google Chrome and goes to the IP we put in our HTML file and gets redirected to our web page. The only time a user would actually do something like put an IP in a browser like this, however, is through social engineering. You would most likely, in a real life situation, need to send them an email pretending to be someone they know and tell them, hey, go to this IP for free money or a free car, or something like that. It's a bad example, but you get the point. Once redirected, their IP should pop up in the left pane of our beef interface. From here, we can exploit the client computer to do a plethora of attacks. If you click on the IP and then go to Current Browser, then go to the Commands tab, you will see a list of containers that contains different attacks for the hooked browser. There's obviously too many to list here, but we will cover a few in this video. First off, there's the webcam exploit. This exploit is kind of outdated, but it doesn't really work on modern browsers like Chrome. Also, you would need ActiveX or Adobe Flash Player for this to work, which as we know is getting phased out this year. But this exploit would basically prompt the user when visited our hooked web page to activate Adobe Flash so we can see their webcam or take pictures with it, but any person with common sense would know that this is just trickery. The next exploit we have is the get visited URLs exploit. This basically just shows if the client has visited a particular website or not. If they haven't, it returns a boolean statement as false. Type in the URL and hit execute to trigger the exploit and see what happens. In this case, the user has not visited the URL because the JavaScript file returns false. The next exploit we have is the Google phishing attack. This exploit is primarily used for credential harvesting Gmail account information. If the user visited our IP again, they would need to be redirected to a fake Gmail login where they would put in their username and password and it would return that information here. Well, that's it for this video. If you all enjoyed and like to see more stuff like this, make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe. It would help out a lot since I'm trying to hit monetization this year and the requirements for that is a thousand subscribers. So if you could all help me hit that goal, that would be awesome. Well, see you all later. Peace.